And then also you were talking about the whole realm of the angelic. Just mm. talk to us about that. <clears throat> the hardest people to convince about angels are Christians. Because I think they, they, they're almost embarrassed because the world has put them as little cherubims, yeah. little babies with wings, uh, minus the diapers. Um, where if you read the Bible, or through the Old Testament, and if you go to countries where cognitive thinking isn't dominant, even though the education is, yeah. you can be a PhD in India, China, um, and in England, but the perception of the spirit world is totally different. In those other countries, they, they, they are in, understand ancestral spirits, all these type of things, and can embrace it with academia. With us, we're Greek-based. We're, we're, we're into, in, into um, cognitive yeah. thinking. And so the Bible talks all through the Old Testament of angelic visitation, talks about it in the New Testament. And, and these aren't beings that are, are portrayed on television who come to give you three wishes. They're not genies. They're not geniuses. Mm. They're spiritual beings created by God. Um, and the Bible says you've actually entertained them unawares because they can not only just come in, uh, some angels don't have wings, some have two and some have far more than that. Some to cover the feet, some to cover the face, mm -hmm. some to fly with. But they come as men. Sent them into Sodom and Gomorrah. And they were as men because the homosexuals in the town wanted to rape them. They were good looking men. Um, and we're living in a day that the more cognitive reliance we have, the less spiritual perception we receive. So the angelic hosts are prolific now as they were then. Yeah. Just we don't see them. And many things that we go, wow, wasn't that fortunate? You know, isn't it incredible how this happened? The answer is it was an angelic visitation. Right. So it's not just God himself, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. There are angelic beings and they're there as messengers. You know, Mary received one yeah. from Gabriel. We know Michael came to Daniel and said, I've had to battle through to come to you. And of course, what we said was the reason that Satan, who was the great worship leader, hates specifically the church and Christians is because God has not created another angelic being. He's handed worship over to the church. So we've replaced him. And, and, and if somebody's taking your job off you, you do tend to be a bit peeved, don't you? And that's why he doesn't really like the church, because every Sunday when people come together and worship, and they worship in spirit and in truth, yeah. we put another nail in his coffin. Yeah, I thought that was amazing what you brought in there of just what our place is of taking his place. And that's why if we refuse to worship, God said the stones will have to because there's nobody else. We are the worship leaders of heaven. That's why the Bible says on the last day we will sing a new song. Sure. And the elders will cast their, their crowns <laughs> before him yeah. in that worship. And by the Bible only says there's silence in heaven for half an hour. And, and I reckon it's because that's to allow the English to come in. Because <laughs> we don't have a lot to shout about nowadays. But it means it's not a case of heaven is noisy, it's full of praise. And who's praising him? The angelic host and those humans who have now been transported into his presence. Mm. So all the millions of Christians who have died since the disciples laid their lives down, maybe people watching this, maybe your Christian yeah. husband or wife or child, are praising him and uh, we will learn a song which is untaught by a human worship leader and we'll automatically know it and sing the new song of the redeemed wow makes you tingle really it does doesn't it? 